Want to speak real Filipino from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at filipinopod101.com. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in the Philippines. Handa na ba kayo? Are you ready? Then let's start. First, we'll learn the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Kamusta? Do you remember this from the first lesson? Kamusta literally means, how are you? But it is used as hi or hello. Musta is a shortened version of kamusta, which you can use when greeting friends. Musta, for formal situations, we use kamusta po. Kamusta po. Now, here are sometimes specific greetings used when meeting people. Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Literally, magandang araw means good day. To be more specific about which time in the day we greet someone, we use magandang umaga, magandang tanghali, and magandang hapon, meaning good morning, good noon, and good afternoon respectively. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. During the evening, there is only one greeting and that is, Magandang gabi. Magandang gabi. Maganda means beautiful or good. The connector NG is added to connect maganda and gabi. In formal situations, you just need to add po to the Filipino greetings I've already mentioned. Magandang araw po, magandang umaga po, magandang tanghali po, magandang hapon po, magandang gabi po. Are you ready for more? Next are some greetings we use when leaving. To say goodbye in Filipino, we say paalam. Paalam. We also have, sige, mauna na ako. Literally, all right, I'll go ahead. And it's a more casual way of saying goodbye. Sige, mauna na ako. Finally, we have, hanggang sa muli. Meaning, see you again. Hanggang sa muli. Again, to make these formal, we just need to add po. Paalam po, sige, mauna na po ako, hanggang sa muli po. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Filipino. Let's review them all again. Here are the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Magandang araw? Magandang umaga? Magandang tanghali? Magandang hapon? Magandang gabi? When leaving, we have paalam, sige mauna na ako, hanggang sa muli. For greeting people who are older than you, just add po. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Erica's tips. Another famous greeting you might hear in the Philippines is mabuhay. This literally means live, but it's used to mean welcome. It is used in formal situations like when welcoming an audience during events or when welcoming people into the country but not necessarily when welcoming guests to your home. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Filipino. Are you ready? Here we go. Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagal akong makilala ka. Hi, I'm Erika. It's nice to meet you. Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Did you get it? Let's take it step by step. Start by saying, Kamusta? This means, how are you? But it's commonly used to say, hi, in Filipino. Next, say, ako si, I am, and then your name. My name is Erica, so I'll say, Ako si Erica. 
Finally, say, Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. This means, it's nice to meet you. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Next, we're going to learn how to introduce ourselves in formal Filipino. But first, I'll teach you two words that turns any Filipino sentence formal. They are po and opo. Po, opo. All Filipinos learn these two words when they are young because they are a must when speaking politely to those who are older. Now here's how to introduce yourself in formal Filipino. Kamusta po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kinagagala ko po kayong makilala. How are you? I'm Erika Reyes. It's nice to meet you. Kamusta po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kinagagala ko po kayong makilala. Did you notice the word po in this introduction? Let's compare it with the informal introduction we learned earlier. First, we have Kamusta po? Instead of just kamusta. As we've said before, kamusta means how are you and has essentially the same use as hi in English. It comes from the Spanish phrase, como esta? We add the word po to this to make it polite. For the next sentence, there is no need to change ako si or I am. However, saying your full name is considered more formal. In the Philippines, we say our first names first and last names last. Finally, pay attention to the ending. We went from kinagagala kong makilala ka to kinagagala ko po kayong makilala. Ka or you is changed to the plural pronoun kayo to make the sentence more formal. The pronoun is moved to the front of the verb and ng is added to connect the words. Finally, we also add po to the sentence to show respect. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Filipino is, Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. The formal way to introduce yourself is, Kamusta po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Now it's time for Erika's tips. Have you gotten hold of saying, Kinagagala kong makilala ka? Well, you might be surprised, but Filipinos say, Nice to meet you, more often than its Filipino counterpart. This is because many English words and phrases are used in daily conversation since English is the second official language of the Philippines. Filipinos also shake hands during first meetings, just like in many Western cultures. But of course, if you use the proper Filipino introduction, your new Filipino friends will definitely be impressed. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Handa na ba kayo? Are you ready? Then let's go. Here's how we say thank you in Filipino. It's very easy. Salamat. Salamat. Salamat means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add maraming. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Marami means a lot, and the ng is a connector added to marami to connect marami and salamat. Maraming salamat literally means many thanks and is equivalent to Thank you very much. During the last lesson, we mentioned the informal and formal way of speaking Filipino. Salamat is the informal way to thank someone. When thanking someone older than you, you need to use the polite formal form. Do you remember what we need in order to do that? That's right. We just need to add the word po. Salamat po. Salamat. If you really want to thank someone in a formal setting, you can add maraming, which means a lot, as we have just learned. Maraming salamat po. Maraming 
Salamat po. Now, how do you answer? It's easy. Just say, walang anuman. Walang anuman. Walang anuman literally means it's nothing, but it is the equivalent of you are welcome. Wala means nothing, while anuman stands for whatsoever. It is a very common phrase to say when replying to a friend or a stranger who is thanking you. To make it formal and more polite, just add po. Walang anuman po. Walang anuman po. So when someone says salamat or maraming salamat po to you, you can simply reply with walang anuman or walang anuman po. Yes, it's that easy. Now it's time for Erica's tips. The word salamat is said to have been of Semitic origin. It sounds similar to the Arabic salam and the Hebrew shalom, meaning peace. Filipino has been influenced by many languages throughout history, so don't be surprised if you find similar sounding words from other languages, most especially Spanish words. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? May isang lalaki at isang babae na nag-uusap. Ilang taong gulang na ang lalaki ngayon? Malapit na ang kaarawan mo. Oo, kinabukasan na. Magiging ilang taong gulang ka na? Magiging anim na pong taong gulang na ako. Binabati kita. Magdiwang tayo. Maraming salamat. Ilang taong gulang na ang lalaki ngayon? May isang lalaki at isang babae na nag-uusap. Ilang taong gulang na ang lalaki ngayon? Malapit na ang kaarawan mo? Oo, kinabukasan na. Magiging ilang taong gulang ka na? Magiging anim na pong taong gulang na ako. Binabati kita. Magdiwang tayo. Maraming salamat. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? May isang lalaki at babae na nag-uusap. Sino ang kasama ng lalaking nakatira sa bahay? Bakit hindi ka pumunta sa bahay kuminsan? Salamat, pero medyo kinakabahan ako. Gusto ko munang malaman ang ilang mga bagay tungkol sa pamilya mo bago ako makipagkita sa kanila. Sige. Nagtatrabaho sa opisina ang aking ama at ang libangan niya ay pangingisda. Ang aking ina naman ay isang may bahay at magaling siyang magluto. May mga kapatid ka bang lalaki at babae? Oo. May isa akong kapatid na babae at isang nakababatang kapatid na lalaki. Kasal na ang aking kapatid na babae at nakatira siya sa ibang bansa. Ang kapatid ko namang lalaki ay nasa high school na ngayon. Mayroon kang magandang pamilya. Gusto ko silang makilala at makausap. Sino ang kasama ng lalaking nakatira sa bahay? May isang lalaki at babae na nag-uusap. Sino ang kasama ng lalaking nakatira sa bahay? Bakit hindi ka pumunta sa bahay kuminsan? Salamat, pero medyo kinakabahan ako. Gusto ko munang malaman ang ilang mga bagay tungkol sa pamilya mo bago ako makipagkita sa kanila. Sige. Nagtatrabaho sa opisina ang aking ama at ang libangan niya ay pangingisda. Ang aking ina naman ay isang may bahay at magaling siyang magluto. May mga kapatid ka bang lalaki at babae? Oo. May isa akong kapatid na babae at isang nakababatang kapatid na lalaki. Kasal na ang aking kapatid na babae at nakatira siya sa ibang bansa. Ang kapatid ko namang lalaki ay nasa high school na ngayon. Mayroon kang magandang pamilya. Gusto ko silang makilala at makausap. When learning a new language, it's easy to think, I don't think I'm making any progress. What if I never reach my goals? We all get these thoughts from time to time. But are they worth being scared of? What are the fears language learners tend to have the most? And how can you learn to overcome them? 
Here are the top four language learning fears, according to our users. Number one, I'm not good enough to start speaking yet. This is a pretty common fear or misconception that most learners have. Here's how you overcome it. The best way to get good at speaking is to start speaking from day one. You need to open your mouth and just start talking. If you think you're not good enough, just focus on the lines you want to say. Number two, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. You've got to set small, specific goals. Make daily goals, like having just a five minute conversation. As these small goals add up, you'll be speaking more comfortably. Number three, I'm not making any progress. There are two things you can do right now. Use the dashboard to track your progress. Our dashboard shows how much you've accomplished. Or try a harder lesson on our website. The lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and the hosts explain everything. Now you can understand something you didn't minutes ago. Number four, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This fear can occur when you hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it just goes completely over your head. To beat this, simply read along with our line-by-line -line tool. It's the best way to instantly understand advanced conversations. Translations and scripts are right in front of you. For real-life situations, learn useful phrases such as, can you say it more slowly? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something. So, these are the top four fears and how to overcome them. Luckily, we also have the perfect tools available to help you conquer your fears. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Don't let your fears stop you. Start learning now.